So I'm going to be honest, this is the video that I never thought I would have to record. Uh, the, the, the video that I would never have to watch, like basically someone, uh, I don't know, bashing this project and me, even someone agreeing about it. I, did, I haven't watched the video yet, but I have a vague idea uh, what this is about. As someone who used to be uh, uh, a part of Hearthstone community like way long ago when we still had like world championships and a good game and, and whatnot, um, I was... Uh, I, I loved being a part of that community and a big part of my experience as a, as a content creator, as a player, uh, was the presence of, of Ben Broad within that company. And I still do hold massive respect for, for this person who has created so much for this game. And this and Hearthstone used to be the game that brought me a lot of a lot of good things in life, a lot of, uh, you know, stress and agony <laughs> and other stuff, but, uh, but also a lot of good. And I still uh, want to believe like there's a part of me that wants to believe that this is not what it looks like that this is um, that this is just, I don't know, the way things had to be for some reason, that these are just the higher ups that made these decisions that forced this whole, you know, situation upon us or whatever. But then when I go on to onto Ben Broad's Twitter account and when I see like some of these ideas being, um, I don't want to say defended or endorsed, but let I, I think I think promoted is the right word. Like when uh, when when Marvel Snap as a game is being talked about, and when everything is I don't know like the, the the whole social media team is trying to basically just hold it together, and the people in the comments and the forums and the videos clearly see that there is something wrong with the way the game is designed and the way they plan this whole both monetization and participation system it's something to to really think about and i i admit i didn't want to i didn't want to make a video like this uh, earlier on because i was pretty salty about not getting into into beta I, i'm not i'm not saying that i in any way shape or form deserved it these days i haven't been a a part of uh, of, of a card game community in uh, in a very long time now i've kind of turned towards mmorpgs towards other variety games and i'm not within this community as much anymore but i just thought you know maybe there 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 is a remnant of of my past hard work that i invested uh that could be i don't know the reason for me to actually acquire the the closed beta or whatever it's called and i didn't and that was really that, that was really sad for me so a lot of what I could say about this could be connected to, oh, she just didn't get the beta invite, but it's not just about me. It is about the fact that, uh, th that ha basically half of the world couldn't even get the, the, the closed beta invite because they don't live in the countries where Marvel Snap as a game is, is even released. And the fact that there are these uh i want to say events called seasons that most of the world can't even participate in that will remain as something that like it will remain as your progress once the game is out as well and it's just it's, it's just everything about this is just making me feel so bad as someone who was still even even through all of this and even through you know not getting the beta um i I felt like, okay, you know, I'm not going to be a part of this, but similarly to Hearthstone, like the way they cut, um, they cut like between, I think it was closed beta, open beta, whatever, like all the progress was wiped and everybody was, uh, was on the, basically at the, at the same point after the game was released. I thought that that was the only normal and natural way to release a game and i don't think that there's anyone who would have reasonably been upset if they had said it from the start hey guys you know this is your progress but you can't keep your progress because this beta 
is like the only purpose of this beta is is beta testing or whatever and uh, yes you will get like a maybe a small recognition or an achievement or something like that or maybe i don't know any sort of cosmetics trophy whatever that they've been a part of beta but the fact that you get to actually keep all your progress and so many people just can't play the game yet is just a little bit defeating and it's creating this internal problem within the community where uh people are turning people are somehow managing to turn against each other like i see it throughout social media twitter comments and whatnot people basically being like oh you're playing the game so you're gonna be ahead of me once the game is out that is unfair and whatnot it's it's not about the people like these decisions should always be traced back to the development and and not the players like it's not the players fault that they get to play the game and and still keep the progress it was decision that was made to maybe incentivize people to play it uh maybe to incentivize them to already spend money on the game so that the game could get i don't know additional funding even though from what i understood the game was funded correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but i didn't think that money was an issue but you know the fact that the company uh, the, the fact that marvel is is owned by disney hence for everything that has anything to do with marvel snap is also owned by disney and we know what Disney practices have been like for for years now it could just mean that these decisions have come from the the higher ups that we can't even I don't know pinpoint at this time uh nevertheless I want to watch the video and see what Bellar has to say about this I just I, I don't know like I want to be less disappointed I want to I don't know I, I want to still believe that you know Ben Brood as a game developer uh, as the, basically the face of the company, the way he was a face of the of the, of the game in Hearthstone, I want to believe that he can still make good decisions. And maybe I'm just on a lot of hopium right now. But as as someone who was who was so passionate about this community and about the game, and who was so excited to see what the next project is going to be, it's hard for me to just deal. Now, with this disappointment and accept it as something that I should have foreseen, that I should have felt anyway when it comes to this game, because I genuinely have been excited about Marvel Snap. And one day I want to be excited again when I feel like it's fair for me, when I feel like the game is not predatory in any way, when I feel like I'm not behind just because I didn't start playing before that wasn't even that wasn't even my decision like there was no way for me to play i either wasn't invited into the beta or i didn't live at a location where i could even participate in this and i know that there are vpns and stuff but honestly i don't know cheating my way through through using that kind of thing it's just it's, it's just something that's making me feel bad the the whole invite system is making me feel like i'm crashing a party that i'm not even supposed to be on and it just kind of feels bad sorry you know what there everyone this is actually just really disappointing so a lot of people saw hope in the company's second dinner it's the one founded co-founded anyway by the ex-director of hearthstone it was one of the ex blizzard companies they got something in the region of 30 million of funding and then they announced they were doing a card game called marvel snap and one of the things that they talked about with the unveiling of that game was no paying for power, right? It was some form of fair monetization. Now, I am not going to go ahead and say that I know everything that there is in this video. I'm, I don't know exactly to what point Marvel Snap has been monetized. I just want to say that like, if, if you're a game dev and if you are planning to monetize the game and if you say something like this, and it turns out to be a lie it's just a silly stupid thing to do because if there's anything that pisses the community off more than a game being monetized in this certain way and and pay to win and pay to play and pay to progress or whatever is the developers coming out before the before it's everything's been revealed and saying the opposite it's just such such a 
weird disappointing thing in in an age where we have proof of everything that's ever been said on the internet it's just a very silly thing to do that perhaps wouldn't feel as bad as aspects of hearthstone wouldn't even resemble the likes of diablo immortal and the game itself it certainly helped looked like it was actually really good with really neat innovations in the card game space well okay. that's when we come to today's tweet from jeff who said i'm going to spend an evening crunching the details but napkin math now says nexus events uh, in marvel snap snap could be 600 dollars a month to keep up with as priced if this stays the case i can't imagine there being any future here like jeff Foglin is is someone if you don't know Jeff, uh, it is someone who I've been I've been watching on on Twitch for a very long time. Uh, he is a very very credible person within the the card game community, and as far as I know, uh, well. At, at the time I was watching him, he used to play a bunch of uh, Magic the Gathering, there's Legends of Runeterra, and I think he even dabbed in a little bit of Hearthstone. So when he tweets something like this, he bears the responsibility of basically the, the entire community uh, taking his opinion as a, as, a, as a matter of fact, because there's so many card game enthusiasts who, uh, who are within his community. So I am, I'm inclined to believe this and $600 a month is just making me like these things, starting with Diablo Immortal, going into, into something like this, it's just making me feel like the developers of these games are forgetting who gamers really are like yes there are some really rich kids out there who can you know go ahead and spend this money and i understand that those are the kids that are being targeted these days but at the same time if you think about the basic gamer stereotype it's it's a person i don't want to say a guy because I'm, obviously i don't believe that <laughs> but um but like we we're talking about people who are often portrayed as people who sit at their screens uh, eating ramen noodles wearing the the same clothes for a week or whatever like i'm not saying any of that is true but what i'm saying is that not, nothing about gamers has ever been assumed to be um I don't know gamers are never assumed to be rich people and i feel like the entire industry has started treating gamers like millionaires like where do where do we even get all this money to keep up with the with the content like an, an average person can't afford this they just they just can't taking into consideration that an average person who uh, already is involved into games that uh, require you to put in your credit card and for whatever like yes there are some you know single people out there no judgment whatsoever who have enough money to spare for for themselves but most people most adults are like who who will play these games are mostly family oriented people so unless that they unless they're aiming for the complete financial destruction of their family they are most likely not going to go ahead and spend fortune on on these on these games every month unless they have addictive personalities that these games are just ruthlessly um I don't know, uh, ex exploiting, I guess, would be the word, which, which makes the whole thing even worse. Yeah, so how on earth are you going to have a ballpark of nearly 600 a month in vaguely desired for spend by the company in a game that in its launch said paying for power wouldn't be a thing? Well, today we're going to find out. And honestly, it feels really bad it all it feels like a little bit of a betrayal to be honest it especially does. considering that goodwill in this case towards the figurehead of the company was i think a, a major part in why people actually paid attention to this game so of course right now there is hearth we wouldn't have we wouldn't have really known 
about like i'm not saying okay it is a marvel game we would have known about the game but people wouldn't be as interested in marvel snap i think if if a lot of people didn't know that ben broad was behind this people were very curious and i was i was one of those people and it's just wild to me that ben broad as as a face of this company as someone who knows who they are to to the to the community of, of of card gamers that he can put his name and his face behind decisions like this and and just you know i don't know be forced to to deal with this like i'm, I'm not saying be forced as in like okay he didn't make any of the decisions it's just out of his hands and he doesn't endorse any of this but he had to because they're disney and whatnot no i i'm not gonna go down that road because i do believe that people do change and they change their attitudes they change their practices and whatnot but i i would i would like to believe that not everything about marvel snap that's currently looking like it's a bad thing is is a part of their internal decision making stone there's magic the gathering arena rune Terra from riot games and Yu-Gi-Oh master jewel that's been doing super well but now with marvel snap they really do risk alienating their player base before the thing even comes out of beta it's a bit of a messy situation now what's happened is that the beta has been progressing and one of the things that people have had a pain point with is basically progression surrounding the collection level system that the game has. Now this is how it this is how it's explained, right? So instead of opening packs or manually crafting specific cards like in many of the rival games, this new title instead opts for a collection what level system. Collection so level? the way it works is that by upgrading existing cards with various in-game currencies, you then advance through a number of possible rewards including new cards on odd occasions. With each new edition completely randomized though, players no longer have uh, manual control over what cards they want. So it's not like in Hearthstone where eventually via dust, you can make the thing that you want. Because as we all know, the one thing that- I, whenever I see these things being uh, needlessly uh, overcomplicated, like when, when, when I see that they're trying to reinvent the wheel and mind you the wheel has already been invented literally by ben brode and his team in in the early days of hearthstone reinventing it it just looks really fishy because these games on their own are doing well runeterra is doing so well it's like you can you can acquire pretty much everything through just the just the gameplay and the rest that you can't you can just get through the through, like through the dust system and and whatnot why would anyone go ahead and change this if it wasn't predatory if it didn't have anything to do with the actual monetization game players absolutely love is not being able to control the cards they get so they can't build the decks that they want and that is something that is far more of a real problem in marvel snap because it has pretty damn small deck sizes, and that means that within your deck, every single card counts. But don't worry, everybody, this is, of course, the games industry, and that does mean that whenever- That means that you're, like, if you want to play something, your entire experience within a game will depend upon you getting that one card. It's not like in Hearthstone where, I don't know, you're missing an epic or whatever, legendaries, I don't think you can actually miss if the, if the whole deck mechanic revolves around it unless it's like a, it's like a supplementary a legendary like something that is like a additional burst or or a weapon removal or something like that um if you're missing like an epic card that you really need but it's still super expensive you can try to put in another epic card and just kind of hope for the best but in these decks where you get like what like five or six cards per deck or I, I don't i don't even know how many how many there are it's just not possible your entire experience depends only on getting all of the cards from that deck and as a player that puts you in a really desperate situation where you see getting that one card even if it means paying for it over and over again to increase your chances of getting it as the only way to have fun which is just terrible Never a problem is created by a system that has been designed, oh, you can also create and then sell the solution. Now, if you want less bullshit and more of the good shit, then today's sponsor Brilliant come in because they're a site and an app that provides you with the fun interactive courses in STEM topics that are seriously some of the best that I have seen. 
the first 200 to click my link down below get 20% off. Now what's really funny is just comparing how I learned computer science in uni to their approach. And their approach is just, well, it's so much more approachable. I mean, man, it's actually fun. It's actually interactive. They lay things out like quizzes. And it's, it's just really good with interactive elements. That's and cool. if you're stumped on something, you can see a full, detailed, rich explanation of the solution so that you can learn along with them. Now, for me, I actually never learned Python. Um, I learned C Sharp for Unity. That was my only focus. So in my spare time, I have been slowly making my way through their Python course. And you know what? It's just neat. Even seeing how they teach things that I'm already familiar with is fun because I then compare that to how I was taught. And I just think, wow, this is so much more intuitive. It's so much more fun. If I was recommending a new That's person cool. wants to get into code or something, I would say do this first. And of course, by having all the code run in your browser, you don't have any weird setup related issues. Stuff just works. So it's a super refreshing approach. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, I've got so many gaps in my knowledge. I kind of feel like since uni, I've fallen off the wagon, right? Like, I haven't developed myself because I've been too busy working. Well, with Brilliant... Yeah, but like, when you finish uni, like, I I, I understand this because I had the same uh, problem when I finished. It's like, you suddenly, suddenly everything feels like it stops for you. It feels like you're not being fed knowledge at all. And you suddenly don't even know where you where you would learn from or what it is that you need to learn. And then you realize, unfortunately for me and for so many other people, is that a lot of the stuff that you've been taught at uni was just filler knowledge and a lot of bullshit that you weren't even ever supposed to know, but they just needed something to to I don't know to you to use to give to you to learn so that you can get, I don't know, graded or, or whatever, categorized in some way based on your marks. And it just feels bad. That's why these things are, are just so good because they're feeding you actual knowledge and you, you feel that after these things, you can actually take actionable steps. It's actually got me learning again. Python's been fun, but I've also dabbled a little bit in some of the quantum computing. And they have so many fascinating topics. So even if you just want to become a more well-rounded person for the sheer hell of it, it is the perfect place. And obviously, if you're thinking about your career, well, I mean, hey, this is one of the best ways that you can get started, get your foot in the door in high-paying fields like AI, computer science, etc. So much more fun than a boring textbook because the topics actually click. So I love what they do. And whether you want to learn yourself or maybe spark the mind of a younger person, Visit brilliant.org forward slash Ballier News today. The first 200 to click will get 20% off their annual subscription. Okay, so thank you to Brilliant. And let's head back to Marvel Snap here where, oh man. So the solution to the problem that they created is Nexus Events. Now, these were supposed to be added in the second season of the game, which is going to have a tie-in with the movie Thor Love and Thunder. And this would solve some of the issues around card collection. What does that mean? Can you see the money coming in already? Now, the bad news is that they're just loot boxes. <laughs> Wait, didn't he say events? How is, how is an event a loot box? So, as broken down in an excellent video by Jeff, you can basically get the specific Jane Foster, the Mighty Thor card, which is brand new or an existing card uh, for Destroyer. Now, you can pay 180 gold, which is the in-game currency, okay. to open a rift. Or you can pay 1,800 okay. to open 10 rifts. Okay. And every 10 packs that you open, that guarantees a four-star reward as a part of a pity system. So, 300 gold for 499 is your starting point there. Um, of so, oh, so you buy the, the in-game currency with money and then you buy the and then you buy the packs you don't directly buy packs so you're technically not gambling but of course note there 300 gold but to open two packs it costs more because one pack is 1800 is uh, 180 gold so that feels scummy but the other options are 700 for 999 1450 for 1999 2600 for 3499 3850 for 4999 and 8000 gold for uh, for 100 bucks Jeez. So at this stage, you might think it seems 
pretty clear what they want, right? It seems like they want you to buy enough gold to buy a ten pack yeah. of cards, and then via the pity system, you'll definitely get a four star. So maybe okay. Jane Foster, maybe Destroyer, right? Okay. Until you realize that Jane Foster and Destroyer are in fact not four star cards. No, they're not. They're actually super rare rewards. They have a 1.5% chance uh, to drop every time that you earn a pack. Or they are guaranteed with every 50 openings. So that's another pity system. So So how much would how much is is 50 packs? How much money is this? Let me see. It was uh 50 packs is one 10 goals, 1800. So it would be like 18. Th oh my god, that is a lot of money. So, I mean, get ready to swipe. There are two per month, and then there are also time limited events. Now, the good news is that these new cards will eventually enter the randomized loot pool. So they're basically playing into the the fear of missing out at this event or the opportunity to get the loot boxes. Uh, happened twice, uh, twice a month. There will be two Nexus events per month because on top of all this, they're time limited events. The good news, you'll be able to get these new cards when they enter the standard randomized loot pool. The bad news, they won't enter the pool until two months after the relevant event ends, and you will still have to randomly acquire them. So, basically, if there's ever a competitive deck with these cards, you just can't have them unless you spend a ton of money, and there's no way to craft them. That drives, uh, that drives the rest of the game. But the bad news... <laughs> the bad news, folks, is those cards enter that pool in two months time now can you see how this would be a problem because what happens if jane foster is really good right what happens if jane foster becomes part of a meta deck oh okay so in two months the plebeians are going to have a chance Tense. to get jane or right now the people who just keep on swiping and exploit that pity system well, they can definitely get Jane Foster now and definitely have that power. I don't know what their policy is like on getting duplicate cards. Like, what if what if a person gets the other card? Are they guaranteed a Jane Foster on their next pity draw or can they get it twice? Like, I would guess that they learned from Hearthstone that these uh, that once you acquire a super rare card, you can't get it again. But I'm still not sure. Again, this is a card game, so meta decks the competitive aspect that's very much core to the experience so as um, as jeff is arguing that means you'll be spending 460 dollars a month or about five and a half grand a year at worst to keep up with full set collections Jesus. which is actually shockingly um almost two like people in, people in my country don't even earn 460 dollars per month on their regular jobs it's like this is not just discriminatory in the community of gamers, but it also hinders pretty much everyone who lives at a certain location. Because if you if you live where I live, why would you even dare play this game where you need to, to, to spend money like all the rest of the people are? It's just such a, I don't know, such, such a sad world that we're starting to live in. Two and a half times the yearly cost of what it would be to keep up with the sets in Magic the Gathering Arena. That's kind of wild to me because you're like, Magic? That's the hardcore game where, I mean, there's basically a whole secondary economy surrounding the actual real physical Magic cards. So, I mean, damn, you wouldn't think that the uh, the online version is, is, you know, is that much better. But yes, it actually does seem to be. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Michael, okay, 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 but it's a free-to-play game. You know, having card openings in a card game, that's normal, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, but, but you see, here's the problem. This is a big old far cry from the statement when they launched the game. Now, I don't know what this means to you, but when I read this, important to us that you're not paying for power. You're literally doing that. Now, is it power that you'll otherwise have a random chance of accessing? 
you could argue you could say something like oh well you can have all the other cards or there are thousands of ways to build a deck and not have these cards included or if 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 there's not a lot of people having these cards how can it ever become a meta deck like you'd be surprised at the at the lengths that people will go to to acquire something like this especially if they are completionists if they like to collect things collect cards or whatever and get invested into a game i've, I've been there with hearthstone i know that people will surely do this in two months time yes which means that if those cards are good within that two month time i mean it's super powerful super super powerful especially because it's a time limited event so there might be a gap of let's just say a month and a half where nobody can get jane foster other than the people who were able to avail of the pity system during the nexus event where she was available right can you see the problem here I don't know how often these these nexus events or loot boxes or whatever will be is it two a month every month or is this does this count as a i don't want to say an expansion or whatever like if it if it's every month then that is just a real disaster because every month you'll be having these cards that are entering the pool that uh, uh that what do, what do I want to say? Like every every two months, you will have the cards that will enter the pool that first became available to those people who invested into loot boxes two months ago. So every two months, there will be like a meta refresh, but with these cards only, not through like normal ways of like expansions. Like okay, you buy the cards. This is you buy the card packs. This is what you get inside of the card packs. Is this their idea of how they're gonna keep the game fresh? It's really quite shocking. And heading over to uh, to the subreddit to see what the player base actually thinks. It's rough. And remember, this is in response to this game's early and dedicated community. That's what's important here. These are the people who are willing to go in in beta. Them saying, hey, we gave you clear, direct feedback that we want more agency over how we get cards. And we get less. This person saying they spent all their gold just to get fewer credits than they would have if they just spent it in the store. And their rare drop was an avatar. Which is, of course, not Aww. really what they're going to want. To add insult to in injury, I was awarded boosters, the in-game resource so common that it's practically worthless. These Nexus events could have been exciting and fun. Instead, they feel scammy and a waste of time. Please remove boosters from the Nexus event rewards and add a reward track. Speaking of that, the new loot box is far worse than we ever had before. A guaranteed card is much better than a loot box that could deprive us forever. That so that's just one example, and uh, that is generally the mood of that subreddit. And moving on, we like if your early community isn't happy with your with your system at all, there's something that you have to do. Why would you decide to go ahead and make this game in the first place if you're gonna just make everyone miserable? Got a PC gamer and Polygon journalist, uh, Allison, effectively ending her following of the game in a quote you know after what's quote a predatory fomo crash cash grab which is what it is hey ben Brode, the new update shows the direction second dinner is taking and it's bad we'll release some insight covering this insidious is insidious a new word or is just a h in front of insidious <laughs> uh, model but unfortunately i don't cover predatory fomo crash cash grabs disguised as competitive games wow. would feel dishonest giving more pr and wow. yeah absolutely but then, of course, people start thinking about NetEase because NetEase did invest uh, 30 million into Second Dinner. Mm -hmm. And people then have a little bit of a think about Dabble Immortal with its gacha gems. And then you almost look at this and you're like, hang on, is this? Well, they let the devil into their house. So this is, this is what we get as players. Is this like weird gacha mechanics in a competitive uh, card game where now we're basically, you know, they're called whatever they are, but they're, they're basically just gacha pools with a pity system? Yes. To get four star and very rare cards? I mean, look, a lot of those criticisms can be leveled at Hearthstone, and I do level them at Hearthstone, especially with how egregious some of its stuff can be. But here it is just the sheer going back on one's word i mean can you imagine saying it's important to us that you're not paying for power and then mere what two months after that you put in predatory 
FOMO based cash grab stuff into your game. What the hell's going on? If this is truly a decision and a situation that was out of the dev team's hands, which I honestly doubt, it must be it must be feeling pretty bad because I do believe that there are people within that dev team who don't want this game to turn into something that people will see as a cash grab. They've been working on this for years and I'm sure that there's good people out there who don't want this to be what Marvel Snap already is and the way it's dragged through social media. But at the same time, I'm I I can't really I I I can't honestly believe that nothing could have been done about this. It gets more confusing because the way that they frame things is that they call the shots, right? They say often funding comes yeah. with a lot of strings attached, right? Multitudes of people looking over your shoulder, giving feedback. Ours didn't. We have complete creative control over this and any other project we decide to do. Complete control over how we decide to grow, structure, and run. And that's the problem because it lo it's looking like they put their names behind these decisions, which is just making me wonder, like, you know, this is, this is so weird. On or our organization forever. So based that's on your that decision? statement, <laughs> we can only assume then that second dinner are, are responsible, right? I mean, like, logically, we can, of course, imagine them getting some pressure from the people who financially backed them to ramp up monetization. But because they've tried to... You don't ever so openly put it on your website if this is not something you believe in. ...sell their company on this. The primary recourse that we have is to say, okay, you've done this bad thing, and based on what you said before, you did so with full control of, of your company and what you do in the game. And that feels really bad. Yeah. And I think it feels especially bad because Marvel Snap was very heavily marketed after Ben Broad. Right? And maybe they didn't intend to do that, but Ben was the face of Hearthstone. It was inevitable. It was just inevitable. And so many community members have, have kept tabs on, on Marvel Snap exclusively because they missed him. Right? He was the face of Hearthstone. So a lot of that goodwill... And a lot of people really liked him. He always brings the thunder with his presentations. He seems full of passion, vigor, energy, excitement. And you can't help but get excited for the sorts of things that he announces. Yeah. He's so good at doing it. Right? He's just one of those infectious, like, strong personalities. And that means that he's really likable. So, of course, the, the company's rap, the company's name, the company's game, a lot of it is sort of trading off his image. And that is an absolutely awesome asset for that company. And it's, you know, it's absolutely a credit to Ben and how he's been able to foster, uh, you know, to... I, I, I could have never, ever assumed that it would turn into something like this. In my mind, having your own name, which is Ben Broad, having it represent a company like this and you standing behind these decisions in... In my mind, it's just such a huge honor and a huge responsibility at the same time. I, I, I did not see this coming, honestly. For that community, right? He's done a fantastic job. But now the downside comes.